Hi, I'm Stella and welcome to my channel 30 Books where I talk about Australian books and Australian writers to encourage you to go out, buy, borrow and especially read an Australian book. Bit of a shout out now to Australian writers. Most of uh, Australia is in lockdown here in Victoria and New South Wales in particular, which has meant there's been a couple of festivals and writers events, <laughs> I'm sure launches as well, as well, that have been canceled. Now these type of events are very important for writers. It gives them an opportunity to celebrate their book being launched, to talk to other writers, to do a bit of networking and hopefully to sell some more copies of their books. Now writers do not earn a lot of money so if you have an opportunity to buy an Australian book and also go and support one of our independent bookstores please do so today. Otherwise go and borrow one from the library. Now what have I been reading? Uh, in the month of June Oh, so good. I read my top pick for 2021. I haven't got a copy of it, but I gave it back to the library. It's Amnesty by Aravind Adiga. This was shortlisted for the Miles Franklin Award. I really wanted it to win. Uh, I kind of thought that it would get pipped at the post by The Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott, which I've also read. Um, but Amanda Lowry won. I haven't read that book, but I am going to now. So what I loved about Amnesty, it is such a small book, but it its themes and, and, and its plot, it, it encompasses a world. It's the story of Danny who is illegally in Australia. He has overstayed his student visa from Sri Lanka. He has information about a murder. Should he come forward and risk deportation or will he have an amnesty to stay? It all takes place in 24 hours in Sydney and it is the whole world. We get to know how Danny knows the people implicated in the murder. We find out a lot about the insights that he gives for people in Australia who are here illegally and how they're exploited and with pathos and compassion and humour. It is actually a really funny book but just told in this way that this this tone just gives it this it's very worldly that's what it is it is and it's world weary but Danny has this beautiful optimism which gives it even more pathos highly recommend this book very small book cracking great plot beautifully told uh, brings Sydney to life really rich I'm just, I, I'm telling everybody to read this book. That's Amnesty by Aravind Deka. Now, the other book that I have the absolute pleasure of reading, it's a young adult book. It's called Time Catches When Days Tilt, and it's from debut novelist Karen Ganane. Now, it's a Time Catchers series. I know there's a second book coming out. This is historical fantasy. It is set in London in 1858, so Queen Victoria is ruling. And then there is a parallel universe that people step into or are snatched away to called Donlan, where another queen is ruling and she's called the Green Witch, which is a play on Greenwich because it is all about time. Ava is a watchmaker's daughter. She you know, not from middle class, she's kind of lower socioeconomic, which is a bit of a source of shame. But there's something special about Ava. And she finds herself going to this other world and meeting a young man called Jack. And that's all I'm going to tell you. This was such, it's such an assured book from a debut author. I loved it. The way that London has been set up in that Victorian times, I could just absolutely see it. And then, then there's this other place of Donlan, which is kind of the 
best description I could give it was like kind of a steampunk um, era and that is Time Catches When Days Tilt by Karen Ganane out by Penguin. This book was sent to me by the author. Thanks. There's a couple of books that I've been reading. I'm going to do these two together. It's Wayne Marshall's Sherl, which is a set of short stories. It came out in about 2019 and a book called Grimish by Michael Winkler. Now, the reason I'm doing these two together, I had the opportunity of talking to both of them about masculinity and humour at the Port Ferry Literary Weekend, and it was at Blarney Books and Art. Absolutely great conversation. And so Cheryl is these really funny short stories about, you know, playing with these kind of ideas that Australia has of masculinity and uh, so the cover is of a man kind of dipping a kangaroo and the kangaroo is Cheryl in question and the man has fallen in love with the kangaroo. Grimish by Michael Winkler. I think it came out and this came out earlier this year. This is kind of you know it's 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 non-fiction, but fiction combined. Really interesting book. It is about uh, Joe Grimm, who was a boxer, who was a boxer in the early 1900s, and it's sort of about his tour in Australia. Now, I say it's non-fiction, but there is a talking goat in here. Like, and oh, he was a terrible boxer but he was a master of pain. Look, if you like unusual books that are funny in a really obscure way, and it's also self-published, um, and a really kind of a fantastical book, and Michael Winkler is a lovely man and a great writer. So I can highly recommend Sherl by Wayne Marshall and Grimish by Michael Winkler. A couple of other books I was absolutely delighted that to read uh, and get back with Tippy in Nancy Business, which is the follow-up to The Nancys by R.W.R. MacDonald really funny books delightful i have interviewed rob you can catch the interview and i also talked about this and uh when you read the book look out for stella joe the the ferret who is the slinky assassin and the book i am currently reading is in my defense i have no defense by sinead stubbins a series of essays really funny really great i'm told if you like david sedaris i don't um but you will like these essays but uh i just think these are fantastic and that and that is what i have been reading in the month of june uh well, let me know what you think and what books you think i should read next and i'll see you next time on 30 books mm -hmm.